Hi, and welcome to Model Railroad TV. This is going to be a project video on the uh, Z-Scale layout in my basement, and uh, what we're going to take you through here is we're going to scratch build a wooden trussle along this uh, section of track that goes over the Bear Creek here. And uh, what we're going to do are, on this first part, what we're going to concentrate on, we're going to make templates for this bridge. This, as you can see, is a, uh, you know, a not freelance, but uh, we're not following any uh, particular grades of curves, and it's not straight. So in any, anyways, it's, a, it's an unusual shaped trestle. It doesn't follow a straight line. So we have to make templates for the bridge, which we're going to build and assemble the entire bridge separately and then cut it into here when we're done. So uh, the first thing I need to do, I know where my trestle wants to go from here to here, and the first thing I need to do is, is make a template of the track, and it's quite easy. Um, I simply have a piece of tag board here, and I'm actually going to line it right up so the one edge becomes my uh, the start of my trestle. And I'm just going to lock him into position with a couple of push pins. All right. And I push pin it in place, and now I have to do a shade it in with my uh, trusty pencil. And you'll see what I'm talking about here as I... Just gonna run the pencil across like that, and you'll be seeing the track emerging. So back into the shop with the uh, Paper stencil. Right now, all I've done is I've got the outline of the rails and the and the starting and the ending point. I, I know I want to be approximately two inches apart on the uh, uprights, but just to measure quick uh, length of the bridge, and it's almost I'd exactly 18 inches, so that's going to work out swell for me as far as putting them at uh, every two inches. So all I need to do at this point is put a mark every two inches across the bridge. So the next move for me is to bring this back to the layout, uh, pin it in position, and then I'll be able to determine the height of each of the uprights that are going up into the base deck of the trestle. Now that we've cut out our stencil and we've marked every two inches, which is where we're going to put our bridge piers, we bring the stencil back to the layout and, and put it in position. And what I'm going to do now is just mark the height of the, uh, the bridge piers that will hold up the trestle. So, so with a stencil in place and the inches, two inches mark, what I'm doing now is I'm just going straight down right on the, on the model itself, on the mountain basis here, and I'm just putting a mark at the two inch intervals. And this doesn't have to be rocket science. Notice it I'm, I'm, doesn't matter if I'm off a millimeter to it, just isn't gonna matter at that point, because all I'm trying to do is get the height. So move my stencil. And I have my marking where the piers are because as I cut through it, it's going up and down and it's undulating. But um, all I need to do now is marking. I know my upper set and his mark is three quarter inch. Three quarter. Uh, next pier is at two inches even. And I actually, I go a little bit extra, extra. Remember, you can always cut it shorter. You can't make it longer. So I do. I'm rough measuring and just making everything a little bit longer. But I'm two and three quarter on my next one. And the, looks like about three and five eighths on the next one. And so forth and so on down the line. And by the way, I've already done it. So we're cheating here a little bit. But uh, so when I'm done, now I have the, basically I guess you would call it the bridge deck stencil. We have the marking for the piers. We know the height of the piers on each one where they go. And we know the exact starting ending of the trestle. From here, it's into the shop. So uh, all the work now is in the shop until we are ready to install this completed trestle. So I'm going to use just these two different size woods on the trestle. I have a 1 inch and a 3 32nd inch. In the scale, the uh, 1 16th inch is approximately about a 10 inch timber. The uh, 332nd works out to be about a 15 inch timber in real life. I know we're going a, a little bit bigger, 
but that's fine because I want to see it and I don't want to be flimsy and uh, the sizes I mentioned are just real rough approximations so don't get out your slide rules and send me letters but uh, that's approximately what it'll come out to in scale. For the next segment of the trestle building is we need to build ourselves a template for the bridge piers, for the bridge support. So um, starting with a nice flat piece of wood, you know, I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to cut the grooves. We're going to make this into a template for the bridge supports. This is where my uh, shop class in high school is going to pay off. So using my handy uh, table saw here, the first thing I want to do is I need to set the depths of the grooves. And what I'm talking about is the, uh, I'm going to want these to sit in the grooves that I, I dig, but I want it halfway in. So this particular piece of wood being a, uh, well, this is the 332nd piece. Um, basically, I want that groove to go down halfway. The, uh, I'm showing the two pieces of wood we're going to use to build this trestle. We're going to be using a 1 16th inch piece of wood. Uh, basswood is what I'm using because it's a little bit stiffer and firmer than the balsa wood. And then I have a 332nd. So I'm going to use the 332nd for my upright piers. And then the uh, 1 16th is going to go for the, uh, the connecting support members and things like that. So... As I said, the first thing I do is I want to set the depth of my groove and I need to get it halfway of the uh, 332nd. So before we begin, remember to get your safety glasses and uh, I'm ready to make some cuts in this wood. So I'm going to actually cut the trestle more over here. And as I said, I'm searching for my depth here. That was a little too deep. Give it about a quarter crank there. Because I also have to maintain pressure on the saw. I could push that saw in since we're dealing with 30 seconds of an inch here. So I had to bring the saw just till it hit. I didn't really want to push it in there. And so now I'm right at the depth. I, you know, I can just eye it up as good enough. All I needed to make sure is that this piece of wood was exposed so that I can glue onto the cross members without sticking to the template. Okay, so now I've found my depth groove. Now it's time to cut the uh, trestle. Okay, so check my uh, saw. So right up, I'm, I'm set straight up. Perpendicular, 90 degree cut. And that is my first cut, straight down the center. Okay, and of course this is adjustable. So I go out to the right section, and by the way, I want this real tight. I don't want the board to move. I'm going to move the table. I don't want the board to move, so... My outside, this is my outside here, and this is at five degrees. Okay. And now we go back to five degrees the other way. Or the other way. back to two and a half for the final cut. And there is my trestle. Um, what I'll be showing you is that the uh, that saw blade I have is ex exactly uh, 3 32nd inch wide so you'll now see how the pieces of wood are going to uh, slide in as we form the trestle and we'll just show you a little bit more. Uh, I've got to go back to the set and make some calculations now. And uh, what we're referring to here is the height of the trestle. And let me just show you what we're going to do. I went out to the train set and measured. So what I need to find out was the, the width of the top of the trestle. And of course, it came out to be three quarters of an inch. So just taking my ruler, sliding up and down until I find the uh, three quarter inch mark. And I just need a mark there. And so now I'm going to come back across with the saw and make more grooves that way for the other cap pieces and the supports. So that's kind of it. We're ready for our next cut. Okay, so now we're going to, I just need to line up this piece for the cross cut. Oh, here's an important tip. And by the way, I've done these before and I've blown this before. Got to put your uh, angle back to zero. This is a square cut across the trestle. And when I started, I had cut this board completely square. So I knew that was nice, clean, 90% uh, angles. Okay, I'm just kind of bring down my saw blade. I just have to adjust him. Blade right down the middle. And I'll lock in my piece of wood. Yeah. 
and one clean cut across. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this procedure, and we start at the, uh, I guess, down to the first cross member. I go an inch, then I go an inch and a quarter, then I go an inch and a half, and an inch and three quarter, all the way down. And then here, I'll have my uh, support template. And uh, let me make those uh, final cuts, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. So this particular template is now ready to build the cross members. I'm not going to uh, show you much, too much here, but in essence and what I've done is I've, I've cut the groove for the top piece because that is going to be the cap the cap of the uh, of the support here when and I'm just I have to cut him and things get him out of the way but basically now I will slide in my one two three I'm still laying all over the place four and uh, I'm putting my five pieces of uprights here. Go get number one that fell on the ground. And like I said, this is going to be the next segment. I don't want to get into it too deep. But uh, I line up my five, uh, line them up on the top. At this point, I've got to do some measuring and cutting. What you'll see is I mentioned the escalating distances, which I've just marked with a pencil. I didn't need a groove because this piece goes over the top. But once I line up the trussle segments, and then I will glue in these cross member supports, including the angle ones, including the angle ones. And once we glue them all down for one side, that piece will be firm. And as I said, by, with the groove system I've used, it's up above the wood so it doesn't get stuck. It's kind of important to leave those extra sections because so you can get it up, but when you're all done and you got them all glued in, bingo, you'll pop your piece out. Okay, and I have to repeat that for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, and uh, then cut them down to length, and like I said, we'll show you where this whole thing goes from there.